Hi, Jamie Good here from OneOwner.com and I'm going to talk to you today about the terroir. Specifically, seven points about terroir that I think are, are really important. And I've written them down here on this piece of paper and I will go through them one by one. First of all, climate makes a difference. Now, when we're talking about terroir, we're talking about the physical environment in which vines grow that has an impact on the way that the wines made from those vines tastes. So climate's probably the, the, the most important of these physical factors because it's the average climate that a, a vineyard experiences that determines which grape varieties you can plant there. And grape varieties obviously have an impact on flavour. So, so climate's really important, um, and even sort of small differences in the way that um, a vineyard is sloped, or the way that the vineyard faces, um, or where the vineyard's positioned with regards to wind systems or coastal fogs, these factors all make a great difference to the way that the grapes grow because the grapevine is exquisitely sensitive to changes in the environment, probably more so than any other crop. Um, and most grape varieties only really perform well within quite a narrow band of um, climatic um, variables. So point two, soils make a difference. Um, soils are really, I guess, what most people think of when they think of terroir. They think of the, the actual earth the soil that the vines are planted in and how that might affect the taste of the, the grapes and thus the taste of the wine. Um, but we don't really know all that much about um, the geology of vineyards. It's, um, it's still a subject that, that isn't really um, written about all that clearly or spoken about all that often. And there's lots of you know, um, ideas that people have that how, for instance, um, you know, schist might be important or slate might be important. Or, um, or chalk or limestone might be important in affecting the flavour of the wines that come from the vineyard. But um, it's really, there's still a, a kind of black hole between, a black box, sorry, between the, 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 um, the, the soil that the roots of the vine are in and then the flavour of the wine at the end and how those kind of variables interact. Point three, what is the taste of terroir? Um, the answer is that terroir, you can't define what it tastes of. There's no taste of terroir. Terroir is evident in the differences between, between wines. When those wines are made from the same grape varieties um, by the same winemaker, but grown in different locales. So for instance, you might imagine that a, a winemaker has um, two vineyards um, neighbour each other with different soil types. Or um, a vineyard maybe that faces north and a vineyard that faces south. Um, the terroir of those vineyards is, is evident when the, the winemaker then makes wines from both those vineyards um, in the same way. And you taste the final wines and lo and behold, they taste different. Um, this is obviously a demonstration of terroir, but it doesn't answer the question of what terroir tastes like. And it doesn't do anything in terms of solving this sort of, um, this, this black box between, you know, observed differences in the physical environment of the vineyard and then the differences in the taste of the wine. Because one of the interesting factors is that in between um, picking the grapes and the wine you've got all this microbiological activity um, from the yeasts and then the lactic acid bacteria that produces the vast majority of the flavour compounds in wine. So as I taste this wine, it tastes tremendously different to the grape juice that would have been the result of pressing the grapes when they're harvested. And that difference is largely down to the complex microbiology of fermentation. And then the process of, of, of developing that wine, the elevage of that wine, um, through barrels or stainless steel tanks lasting a, a number of months. So we're on to point four now. And point four is that earthy mineral flavors um, don't necessarily come from the soil. And we like to think when we see, for, say for instance, a Moselle vineyard and you see this sort of blue slate and then when you taste the, the Riesling from this Moselle vineyard you taste this kind of blue slate 
character in the wine, or what you imagined Blue Slate might taste like. You're making a, an assumption that the, um, the, the actual soil, the vineyard soil, is some way finding its way into the grapes and then surviving fermentation, such that the minerality in the soil is resulting in minerality in the wine. Or, for instance, you might find an earthy red, and you know that's, that's maybe spicy and a bit animal. And the winemaker might suggest to you that that's a terroir, that's the soil that's giving this characteristic. Well, we can't necessarily be sure of that, because um, because of the way that, that, that almost all the flavours in wine come from um, the action of yeasts on flavour precursors that are present in grape juice, and those flavour precursors um, are produced by the grapes. Um, you know, in the way that plants work, they make their stuff through photosynthesis. They take very simple mineral ions and water from the soil, and then they make all the complex chemical compounds um, that are flavour precursors, um, resulting in flavour in the final wine um, themselves. Plants are chemical factories, and so it's really quite unlikely that a mineral taste in a wine is necessarily coming from the earth or the minerals in the soil, although we'd love to think that was the case and it, it just seems a very attractive idea to think that uh, those roots penetrating the soil are extracting flavour which then finds its way into the wine. I think we have to think a little more um, um, in a little more scientific and sophisticated way to explain um, the characteristics of, of um, wines um, and, and how they might be related to the terroir, the physical environment in which the vineyard is, is situated. And that moves on to point five. Point five is that there is a human element to terroir. I mean, some people like to exclude the human element of terroir, but really, um, you know, the viticulture and then winemaking is a partnership, really. Um, you know, the best viticulturalists and the best winemakers um, sometimes will take a hands-off approach, but it takes great skill to know when to take that hands-off approach and when to intervene. And Many of the steps and the interventions that are made in terms of viticulture and winemaking um, can either heighten or lessen the expression of terroir in the wine. And I suppose in this sense, I don't think terroir is just a totally natural phenomenon. I think terroir is a, is a result of this partnership between humans observing, listening to the vineyard, listening to the vineyard, seeing what that vineyard is, is you know, is, is potentially going to express in the wine and then working towards that goal. Um, so in some ways typicity might be a more useful term than terroir. Um, so question number six, does the new world have terroir? Often it's the, the guys in the old world, the classic old world regions, who go on most about terroir and their implication is that they have such special soils, um, such special climates, that when the new world make wines um, you know, the guys in Australia and New Zealand um, and California and South Africa and they're not making terroir wines. Um, these wines are somehow um, not as complex or not as interesting. Well I think that's nonsense. I think the New World evidently does have terroir. Um, you can see it in, in when you go to taste a, a, a range of wines from a winemaker in the New World who's, who's sympathetic to the notion of terroir. They're producing beautifully expressive wines um, with differences evident from a wine from this site and a wine from that site. So to suggest that the New World doesn't have terroir I think is, is bordering on the crazy. Um, which leads us on to point number seven and point number seven, the last point, is that um, one of the reasons why New, the, the New World approach hasn't always been compatible with the terroir-driven approach is that terroir speaks with a quiet voice. You can easily lose um, the characteristics of terroir through clumsy winemaking or through bad viticulture or picking too late, trying to go for a style that's too ripe. Um, terroir differences are kind of nuances often. They're, they're shown in wines that um, aren't sort of full-blown, um, jammy, overripe wines. And often, you know, the, the imprint of winemaking, especially when lots of new oak is used, can obliterate terroir altogether. Um, really, the wine could come from anywhere. Um, so I think that that's really quite an important point, that, that really terroir is a really a vital concept in fine wine, but it's one that's lost um, if winemakers and, and viticulturalists um, make poor decisions or have too heavy a hand.
anyway, um, I hope those thoughts are of some use. Um, speak to you later. Bye.